Ms. Spear, you may proceed. Welcome to the Transportation Committee. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And to Ranking Member Capuana, to Chairman Schuster, and Ranking Member DeFazio, I really appreciate the fact that you're holding this hearing today because I have um, struggled with pipeline safety now for five years, and we have made very little progress. Uh, the system, frankly, is fundamentally broken. It's personal to me. I've spent hundreds of hours in hearings, in boardrooms, at town halls, and very little has changed. It has scarred not just my district, but the entire region. This is a distant view of the Pacific Gas and Electric National natural gas pipeline explosion in San Bruno, California. When it happened in September of 2010, everyone thought that a plane had dropped out of the sky. The explosion was so great and seen so far away. Closer up scenes were horrific. Eight precious lives were lost. Many others were hospitalized for months with life-threatening birds. I visited many of them at the Burn Center in San Francisco. Three people were considered missing for more than two weeks because there was so little DNA from the intense fire to positively identify them. 38 homes were completely destroyed and dozens more were seriously damaged. It looked like a war zone. Those numbers do not adequately describe the terror that was inflicted on an entire community. And all this was caused by a pipeline that hadn't been inspected since 1956, thanks to the irresponsible gaping hole in our regulations known as the Grandfather Clause. And Congress put the Grandfather Clause in place, and then in 2011 we said to FIMSA, we want you to take this out, and you have 18 months in which to do it. We are three years later, and still they haven't done it. I have sent letters to them, and they come back with, frank, frankly, gobbledygook. Um, this is a piece of pipe that failed in San Bruno because the grandfather clause was allowed it to go uninspected for decades. The Pipeline Safety Regulatory Certainty and Job Creation Act of 2011 eliminated this terrible policy, which previously had allowed companies to bypass comprehensive inspections of old, older pipes. But here we are in 2015, and FIMSA has not yet released a rule implementing those reforms. Frankly, how difficult is it to strike a line in a law that says the grandfather clause is no longer in effect? The deadline to release the rule, as I said, was 18 months, and it's been twice as long. It's clear to me that FIMSA is a toothless tiger. Without the clout to make the serious reforms recommended by respected institutions, such as the National Transportation Safety Board, FIMSA keeps saying that it's working on an improved integrity management system, but after industry complained that it was too expensive, FIMSA allowed its nascent rulemaking to be quietly consigned to the bureaucratic dustbin. While safety does cost money, but so does death and destruction. On this slide is what the utility responsible for San Bruno, Pacific Gas and Electric, has paid or may pay that we know about so far. Far. The stunning figure is $3.9 billion. This is paid by shareholders, not by ratepayers. California's problem with FIMSA and its own state pipeline regulatory agency are a microcosm for the rest of the nation. Despite FIMSA's paying for about 80% of pipeline safety program costs, a crony culture developed between the industry and state regulators in California and FIMSA claims they can do nothing about it. Despite mounds of evidence showing that industry executives were whining and dining top state regulators and flouting ex parte communication rules, FIMSA claims to be powerless to bring CPUC to its heels. Considering that FIMSA holds the power of the purse, I find this hard to believe. Now, in exposés that have occurred in California, PG&E email exchanges with the California Public Utilities Commission exposed complicity of CPUC in judge shopping, in advice in public relations, engagement in the initiative process, and a quid pro quo, quid pro quo relationship. This bankrupt safety culture regularly defeated enforcement of federal and state standards. Just today, 
an external auditor found that the CPUC gas safety enforcement efforts have actually gotten worse and slower since the explosion in San Bruno. This is unacceptable and FIMSA must step in. But this is par for the course for FIMSA. In the aftermath of the San Bruno disaster, I met with then Administrator Quarterman many times, each time as I pushed for regulations that would actually improve pipeline safety across the nation, she would say, we don't have the authority. I'm sure that was true in some cases, but in case of the grandfather clause, FIMSA has crystal clear authority and still refuses to act. In this case, FIMSA is not only a toothless tiger, but one that has overdosed on quaaludes and is passed out on the job. In addition to the technical issue of proper integrity management, PHMSA's oversight of safety programs is lax. They have been amply described in formal reports by both the NTSB and the Department of Transportation Inspector General. PHMSA's problems, which Congress must help them address, are clear. PHMSA's guidance protocols and training for state inspectors are inadequate. PHMSA's pipeline location data has internal discrepancies. PHMSA's database makes it more difficult for operators to learn from incidents. Overall, neither industry nor state nor federal governments produce good pipeline safety data. It's garbage in and garbage out. Though I've talked about San Bruno, I want to emphasize that the lack of adequate pipeline safety measures is a nationwide problem, not a Bay Area or California problem. In 2011, a leak from an 83-year-old cast iron main in Allentown, Pennsylvania, in the Chairman's District, caused a blast that killed five people. Mm -hmm. In 2012, a gas pipeline explosion outside of Charleston, West Virginia, destroyed several properties. In 2014, a leak in a 127-year-old pipeline in Harlem, New York, killed eight and injured 50 more. In each incident, we see the same reoccurring problems, aging infrastructure and inadequate inspection. How many more of these tragedies do we need before we get serious about pipeline safety? In closing, I urge the chairman, ranking member, and committee members to keep the tragedy of San Bruno in mind as you conduct oversight and start to consider reauthorization of FIMSA's federal pipeline safety program. We know how to prevent pipeline explosions. Look at this picture here. It is indeed a war zone. We need automatic or remote control shutoff valves. Now, PG&E has put in 200 of them now. The law that we passed in 2011 said that you only had to put them in if they were technologically available and economically feasible. Mr. When is it I'd going to, to be to economically feasible? Um, I know I need to close, so thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Spear. Thank you for your testimony today.